there is an 80% chance that the S&P 500 will remain below 431 for the next two weeks. In today's video, I'm going to explain to you guys exactly how that is the case, how I got to that conclusion. We're going to take a look at the entire overall market as a whole. We're going to take a look at the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Russell, the dollar, the large tech stocks, the yields, which direction the market can go. Are we going to ping pong around? What's going to happen? All right. Without further ado, let's get started with the video. All right. So basically over the weekend, I was a bit bored and um, I wanted to see some better data in terms of VIX expiration as well as the monthly options expiration dates and what happens to the market after those dates basically occur. So I pulled up a chart of the US 500, which is the S&P 500, and I jotted for the past since January 2022, you know, nice and simple, like quick. I jotted out all of the different um, expiration dates for uh, 2022 into this year, right? And then I basically started to map out the percentage change over a few different time periods. So basically, this is a quick little rundown of what I got, basically. So um, this, I the reason why I chose multiple different data points, so I got the percentage change of that day, of the actual expiration date itself, uh, the change after three days, the change after seven days, and then the percentage change after 14 days. So the reason why I chose three was I wanted to see if there was a, a change in the initial dates direction and then a change within the first three days. And then I wanted to see like a, a much like a better, broader view over the next week or two. So that's why I chose seven and 14. So what we have here is basically. Um, so I literally this is I did this by hand could be presented much better, but this is some pretty interesting data. And here's basically what I found. So with if you have a green day itself, right? If you have a green day and then the third day, uh, the change within three days ends up turning red, right? I wanted to see what the percentage of the seventh within seven days, would that also be the same color? as the second uh change so wow that butchered that expert okay let's try this again guys so there's 21 weeks there's 21 weeks of data okay and okay so we're not getting anything out of this it doesn't mean anything green red m makes no difference what i'm not looking at that at all there's no there's no conclusive data that we can get um the only conclusive data that we can get is when the first two data points change or if they don't change. OK, so I'm going to explain that. So. Um, so what is the percentage of the day itself and the three day change? What what percentage of these flip flopping? So the first one is red. The next one is green. What how many of them are there? So it's about 50 percent. So this is also inconclusive data. We can't make any. Uh, trades based off of this if they changed if so if they changed <laughs> this is so terrible but if they changed right the first data point and the second data point if one was negative and the other one was positive or if the first one was positive and the other one was negative what is the percentage of the seventh day being the same color as the change in the third day 10 out of 11 so that is extremely high percentage so what that basically shows is so f say for example october 19th right if the first and the second day they change right because the first day was red and then within three days after it became green what is the percentage that the change over the next seven days will remain the same color as this 10 out of 11 chance that it's going to remain positive. OK, so that is huge. So same same concept with December 21st, right? We had a green day within three days. We ended up turning red. What is the chance that we will be red within seven days? 10 out of 11 chance. So that's very, very high. So I only when when we're looking at data like this, you only look at data 
that is generally only about over over 70 80 percent anything else less than that is you know there's no point 70 80 percent is what you're supposed to be looking for in any sort of data any sort of pattern anything so um yeah so okay so we got uh you know the what is the chance that the seventh day will also be similar uh direction as the change in the third you know third day that's 10 out of 11 okay cool so that means that there is uh 10 instances where that didn't really occur right so um okay so now to piggyback off of this so this is the first portion and then this is just the second portion so if the first two changed right what is the percentage yo okay guys just i hope this makes sense okay so let me just i really really i honestly hope this makes sense so if these first two change the chances that the seventh day will be the same direction and color as the change in the third day is a 10 out of 11 chance and then the next column the next one will said if it changed what is the percentage of the 14 day being the same color as the seventh day so i said okay if it changes right what is the percentage of the seventh day being the same as the third all right that's 10 out of 11. And then what I want to see even further after that was, okay, if it, if it is continuing, right, will it continue after two weeks? So then I found that after 14 days, it still remains the same as, um, you know, as the seventh day. So we, we get nine out of 11. So it's not as strong definitively, but it's still very, very strong. So then this is where the thing, this is like, this is the sauce. So this is uh, what I really... Um, think could end up happening here is now if the first two don't change what is the percentage chance basically that the third is also going to remain in the same direction so if these two don't change what is the chance that the third will remain in the same direction as the ones that haven't changed and that is an 80 percent chance okay so um and then if the first two don't change what is uh the chance that the fourth will also have the same direction as the second. So that was me basically just being lazy. So I said, basically, you know, if the first two don't change, what is the chance that the fourth will be the same as uh, the direction of the second? So basically, that is an 80% chance that the third week, uh, the change within seven days, and an 80% chance that the change within 14 days will remain um red basically so what what that means for us now is obviously the market has been red for over three days now since october 18th right so that means that there is an 80 percent chance that the market will remain negative and negative in terms of the initial price where we closed from october 18th okay so there's an 80% chance that we're going to remain below that price point from October 18th, as well as below that price point um, 14 days after October 18th as well. Okay, so we are now looking at the S&P 500. Let's go to October 18th and make a um, date and price range here from October 18th. The close, the close of October 18th puts us at around 4th, puts us at 4.30.21. So we should, unfortunately, there's an 80% chance that we will remain below 430.21 based off of those data points um, for the next 14 days. So by November 7th, we should remain below these levels here, according to that data. And according to the, the rate of change based off of um, fixed expiration as well. And then honestly, all the market really is at the end of the day is you're just looking at different things that can give you some sort of edge in percentage. So you would just, honestly, you could get 20, 30, 50 years of data every single time something happens. What is the odds of the next thing occurring based off of past data? Um, you could basically download every single day's worth of data, check the percentage increase on a specific day on average 
Attack the percentage decrease of a specific day on average, a weekly increase or decrease, monthly, everything. So that's all it is. It's just looking at data, having fun. And that's, uh, you know, maybe eventually I will add some years to this as well. Eventually, eventually. But this is basically what I was I was doing. It's a quick little fun little weekend exercise. But yeah, uh, so far, it seems like it's pointing in the right direction. Okay, so this week super super hectic it's gonna be very very hectic let's look at the earnings calendar for this week we have google and microsoft reporting earnings tuesday after hours um snapchat visa as well then wednesday after hours we have facebook reporting earnings thursday after hours we have amazon intel reporting earnings so this week we have four mega cap large tech stocks reporting earnings that is very 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 interesting okay so this is a one hour time frame of the nasdaq and i was showing on twitter yesterday i posted a tweet um this is the tweet right yeah so i posted a tweet basically showing how we are in a this is a falling wedge this is a bullish situation on the market and we should get a bounce and one of the reasons why i was thinking that the nasdaq by the overall market was going to get a bounce monday and tuesday was because specifically prior to large tech stocks reporting earnings there is an earnings run-up meaning that prior to the earnings date right so the earnings date is going to be tuesday prior to that date the price ends up rising generally that's what ends up happening so you can see here the nasdaq is leading uh out of the indices there uh, you know the nasdaq is up 0.3 percent the spy is down 0.17 percent mostly in due to the fact that the russell is down 0.85 percent so the nasdaq is leading tech stocks are leading because they have earnings this week and um i'm expecting that to continue into tomorrow as well and of course there's more fun uh fed powell speaks at 4 35 after our, after hours on wednesday um doesn't seem like it's going to be anything serious but hopefully um you know, let's see what he says. But then Thursday morning, we have advanced GDP numbers. So that is going to be very interesting as well. So it's really tough to really um, swing anything crazy or dramatic overnight, in my opinion, because we have the earnings Tuesday after hours, Wednesday after hours, and Thursday after hours, and GDP numbers, as well as the Fed speaking. So it's a lot of ambiguity after hours. I would be very careful. What we could do is we could look at how the large tech stocks are doing. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to bullet through these. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how bullish or bearish these setups really look as a whole. Okay, so this is Apple. Apple is bouncing off of support, holding 170. That's the bare minimum of what's going on. It does not particularly look too bullish, but it's holding 170. Great. Google. Uh, looking much better than... Um, Apple, obviously, Google with earnings tomorrow. It doesn't look as weak. It's perfectly fine holding 135 to 136, which is great. Microsoft, similar to Google, earnings tomorrow, holding prior levels of support. And uh, it's holding 323, holding 325, looks good. Amazon has earnings Thursday, similar to Apple. The Russell was down today, didn't get any love. Um, so Amazon didn't get any extra love that it normally would have if the russell was strong but this is you know um basically just holding on to support trying to get some sort of like a wedge there's a lot of wedges forming in the market right now so we need to see if you know it could start popping out of this it doesn't look particularly great netflix yeah doing what netflix does apparently um <laughs> and facebook uh it's holding 308 holding support let's see if uh we could get some sort of push to the upside overall uh we also have to go look at tesla so tesla is very overextended this is the third day that we're trading outside the lower level of the bollinger bands we should get a bit of a bounce this i'd be surprised if we don't hit 220 uh within two weeks honestly uh and tesla being this overextended is one of the one of the biggest catalysts for a potential reversal so this has a lot of cannon powder basically to rip to the upside and um when it when something is this overextended to the downside 
it's it begs for a rip to the upside so i would be careful about trying to short tesla it makes way more sense to go long tesla over here in my opinion and um yeah especially since we held 205 so uh yeah especially since we had 200 and 205 but yeah i would be wary about going short tesla but um yeah all right so the next most interesting thing is that this is a chart of the spx and we are right trading right below a major historical support level from january of 2009 and we are at a very important horizontal level of support at 418 so this is very very major this is a very important level here um i would you know it's it's re the market is trying its best to hold these levels if this breaks if the market if the spy breaks 417 it's going to see 414 415 um and then we're basically just going to probably bounce off of like 413 414 give a bounce and um just chop around we have a lot of news and we have cpi data coming out we have a lot of news coming out in the next two weeks we have um so this is next week so we have uh, the main stuff that's going to be occurring next week is um fomc statement and federal funds rate so that's going to happen wednesday after or wednesday at 2 p.m so that is really going to um help dictate which direction the market is going to go as well and of course this is also the last full week of trading for um october and then next week we have two days and then november starts so we know that seasonality wise especially pre-elections seasonality does very 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 bullishly does very well in november and december and i think sometime in november and december that's when a lot of honestly that's when i think it coincides pretty perfectly for even if somehow we were supposed to get one more leg down right seasonality wise november and december should rip to the upside it would get enough people bearish um and things you know we just have to take it one day at a time now so we have the catalysts for this week we have the blueprint basically what's going on that's going to happen next week wednesday and we have these earnings reports this week as well we have all the data so now we just have to take it one day at a time see what happens my thought process is um tech should continue to outperform during this time while earnings are being reported but now what we can do is we could take a look at the yields the vix and the dollar to give some extra um confluence of what's going on in the market all right so this is the chart of the 10-year yields and it's important to look at because it has an inverse relationship to the market when the yields are rising that's generally very bearish for the market and a few days ago when we hit five percent on the rates you know um everyone thought that, that would be the top of the rates and we obviously fell but that falling of the rates did not translate into um that didn't translate into equities prices increasing so that's what occurred on the 20 uh, 10 year yield let's look at the 20 year same concept fell once we hit a uh, five percent on the 10 let's take a look at the 30 year also fell right and then we can take a look at the closer so the two year yield and the five year yield both look garbage and they both look weak so they still look like they have more room to fall they could give a bit of a bounce and of course all of these yields they have an inverse relationship to the market so but right now they're not showing that inversion so the relationship isn't quite clearly there as of yet but they have been and uh you know they have been very prominently working inversely correlated over the past few weeks so you know the yields aren't really showing that much now let's go ahead and take a look at the vix so the vix yesterday on friday it opened and closed outside of the upper level of the bollinger band the vix cannot sustain itself like this so it needed to get a pullback so the vix is important to look at because it has an inverse relationship to the market as well similar to the um yields so if the vix is going up 
then the market should be falling lower. And today, clearly, that didn't really happen either. So the VIX pulled back like it should have, but it was it, it made the market flat. All right. So generally, right, I always say it's either going to be flat or bullish. So if the if the VIX fell today, like today, if the VIX falls, then the market ends up being flat or bullish. And unfortunately, today was one of those days where it was flat. So um, basically, uh, this is not really the best bullish setup. We should continue on a bit lower, especially with earnings being reported tomorrow. I would expect some a bit more of a pullback on the VIX. Hopefully, that'll cause the market to bounce a bit higher. Uh, but of course, we're going to have to see how that plays out. But um, yeah, definitely not. A time to be very very bullish on the vix it's leading to a pullback now we just need to see if that pullback translates into stocks rising and then last but not least let's take a look at the iwm which is russell 2000 similar situation on the bollinger bands when we are trading outside of the lower or outside of the upper it basically wants to return within the bollinger bands so if we're trading up here we want to have a pullback similar to what we just saw on the vix if we're trading Outside of the lower, we want to have a bounce. So now the question basically is, is if we get a bounce on the Russell, will this bounce help the overall market? While the NASDAQ is also supposed to be getting some love, I expect uh, we should be getting a bit of a bounce today and tomorrow. Uh, basically, tomorrow should be a bit more bullish. And uh, regardless, now is not really the time to start looking at shorts, especially intraday. It's not the time to start looking at shorts, in my opinion, and um, better opportunities to lean a bit long, especially now that the IWM is clearly overextended like this. Tesla is clearly overextended. The tech stocks are trying to lead their way, and uh, the VIX is overextended to the upside. The yields are falling. Um, and uh, yeah, the, uh, there's multiple different reasons, and I think... You know, until we have more clearer after after the end of next week, I think that's when things will get a little bit more clear. But, um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's that's all that we can really do is just look for different opportunities to get a clearer vision or a longer term horizon and an outlook on the market. Scalping day to day, one minute chart. You can do whatever you want. But, you know, the fun is looking at things uh, on a larger time frame and making uh, assumptions based off of those larger time frames using past data and then helping the shorter term time frame uh, your, 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 uh, your trading based off of that. So, that's the fun part so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you guys enjoyed please make sure to like comment subscribe do all that good stuff and i will see you guys tomorrow thank you